guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Daggers High and it plays two to four players with a single player variant as well. In the game Daggers High, you're basically going to be a st student at school, in which case you're going to be trying to make your teachers happy, complete essays, score really well on all of your classes, you take part in doing certain things like club and of course going ahead and using your influence to gather your victory points or RP. Whoever has the most RP at the end of this game is going to win. It consists of drafting, it has a little bit of worker placement, so to speak, and then tableau management. Got a lot of going on in this little uh, back to school style game in which you're going to be messing with other players. Let's go ahead and take a look down below at everything you get in the game, and then I'll give you a rough idea of how it's played, and then I will tell you everything about the game Daggers High by jo uh, George Zhang. All right. Go ahead and go down. So here you have the game Daggers High and everything included. And as you can see, it's quite a large game. It's going to be a drafting work replacement and it has some tableau management. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about every little thing. Uh, first of all, you're going to be getting your uh, influence or you can use these pretty much anything in the game that you'll be using them. They come in sets of uh, ones, threes, and fives as far as their value. And you're also going to have these Fs and As that you're going to be putting on your grades for each of the different years. There's four rounds to the game just like there's four years in high school starting with freshman year every player is going to get four cards to start the game with from that deck that will signify the first round and you're going to do a draft in which everybody's going to be passing cards along i draw one from the hand of four pass it along so on and so forth until i get all four cards from looking at everybody's cards you're also going to get all these different markers everybody's going to start on 10 rp or victory points as well as 10 integrity 10 happiness and zero stress your board's all set up and you've got your, uh, your your integrity here, your uh, your points here. You also get two essay cards to start the game with. These will give you guys victory points as you complete them. And generally speaking, they'll also let you get more essays as you complete them. There's three achievements, but only one unlocks during the junior year and senior year in which you can take the fun, which is basically a standardized test. You'll be able to use a certain currency to roll a die and hopefully succeed in getting victory points. You can take it over and over again, though, and it'll cost less as you do. There's also the valedictorian, or whoever wins has to make a speech at the end of the game and then if you caught it costs you one less friend to purchase clubs that are not owned by their players this is the student government president and you can become that and get three victory points as well there's the three other years there's the club cards that you can go ahead and purchase with friends and it has a cost there it also has immediate effects that happen instantly it has yearly effects influence cards whenever they're drawn they're placed face up so people can choose to buy them and they have the uh the purchase cost i believe on them some of them will cost integrity others will cost friendship and others will cost happiness and uh you can go ahead and use that on your board to purchase them at the end of the game you're going to score points with integrity as well as any points you scored throughout the game, etc., etc. Whoever has the most is the winner. There's also a teacher board here as well. Let's go ahead and show you basically a portion of how a, a turn's going to work. You'll look at the cards in your hand. The top left-hand corner is going to be a number, and that number is going to be how many actions you get. Additionally, there's going to be an effect. So for this one, if I chose to play standardized testing, it says all players either choose minus three happiness or minus five or plus five stress. I will go ahead and choose plus five stress, putting me at anxious. If at any point in the stress meter I get to 10, I break down and I'm going to have to put one of these cubes on here making me lose five points at the end of the game unless I can get rid of it. The only way I can get rid of that is if I discard a card from my hand instead of playing one as my action for a turn. Uh, additionally, if I lost happiness, at the end of every year, based on the amount of happiness I have, I'm going to then have to either suffer plus three, five, or nine stress along this tracker here. If it gets a 10 at any point, it's going to make me break down once again and I'm going to have to go to zero stress. So that's basically how one of the cards work. Now let's go ahead and talk about the uh, actions on the cards. So for instance, this one here has my four. So I am going to be able to take four actions and there's five things I can do on my turn that will facilitate actions. There's also things I can do that don't cost me actions like purchasing the clubs or influence or using teacher abilities provided I have influence on the teachers. One thing you can do is study. When you study, you get to place one of your cubes into their English, math, history, or science. Each of them, depending on the year you're playing, we're playing green right now, is going to have a certain cost. This one is going to cost me two, this one will cost me two, this one will cost me three, this will cost me two. And when I have enough stats on them, I can go ahead and take those stats off, flip that over and give myself an A. I'm going to give myself plus three or plus two or plus one on the teacher as far as influence goes, and I get victory points on this track moving along. That is why you're going to want to use stats. If you can get all of your grades up to A's, you're going to get a bonus as well of plus two, three, three, and three for each year year. 
and that is how those work. You'll be utilizing that as much as you can. Studying is important in this game. Chatting, you can go ahead and chat were an action, so my second action could be to chat, and I would simply put two influence on any of the teachers that I want. When I do that, at any point in the time, uh, during my turn, I can go ahead and remove influence from a teacher to do the action, but it's going to cost a certain amount. So for instance, if I had these two and I chose to do a chat, I can place it on physics here. And then I can choose to use the minus two action to remove two, and I get minus three stress. So that would be a pretty useful ability at, at the point for me for right now. And that is how those work. The last thing you need to know about teachers that's really important is if you have enough, so for instance, if I had 10 points, these are two fives, I could take them off, and then that was going to give me four points, and I put one of these guys on him, and no one else is going to be able to use his ability, or at least put, at least chat with him. Additionally, I can only do that one more time for any other teacher, giving me victory points depending on the teacher and depending on the cost for uh, the recommendation of that teacher. There's socialize, which is pretty simple. You're gonna be putting two friends on your friends pool area, and that is going to be currency that let me use uh, to buy clubs as well as other cards in the game. I can also choose to uh, relax, which if I play one on there, I can simply move down three stress. And then the final action is a test correction. That is what is going to uh, make me basically be able to spend the currency. So if I say I did uh, study once and I did study one more time, I have uh, I had four actions. My third action could be to do a test correction, which means I get to take these off and flip this over. And that's basically how you're going to be getting A's in your classes. So that's your full idea of flipping those all over. Um, and that is pretty much what you can do on your turn. Now, of course, all of these cards do different things. Like one of them is going to be three actions, but it makes me have two stress eight influence in one teacher, but there's zero actions I get. Or maybe I'm gonna get Homecoming, which is all players with fewer than five, uh, with five friends, fewer than five friends will get four stress. So you need to have friends in school, right? And then you get two actions. After everybody, after I played my card, he'll play his card, so on and so forth. All those cards are discarded. And then we go to the next phase where we go ahead and play another card until all four cards are done. At the end of the year, you're gonna score any bonus points, any victory conditions, such as this perfect grades, as well as whenever you complete one of these guys here it will say like for instance this is, is this essay is worth an additional rp for every a you have in an english class if you have at least three a's in english classes you can flip this card and draw a new essay so bam that's going to give me one point and then we have to draw another essay card which will hopefully give me additional points in the game these club cards are what are going to facilitate end of year or end of round bonuses for instance when you get them for spending eight friends nine ten whatever it says you'll say it'll say plus six to the gear gaff influence. Additionally, every year you're gonna get plus two in a math stat, so you'll be able to put two on math. Pretty useful, right? So buying these club cards is important and you're always gonna have four of them out. Influence cards actually will come out, but only when they're said to be drawn, but they're gonna be utilizing your other your other things like integrity and happiness and, and uh, was it integrity, happiness and friends, in which case you can buy those cards. They give you some instant effect at the cost of one of your important stats, right? And uh, that is pretty much the game. I'm just gonna go around, continue playing the game, and uh, when you get to your se junior and senior year, you'll hopefully be doing the fun and scoring some victory points. If you can get that valedictorian, you're gonna win the game and do your little speech, and that is Daggers High. All right, let's go ahead and come up, and I'll tell you what I think about the game and whether or not you should pick it up. All right, so a couple caveats about this game. Now, like I said, you can only have two teachers with their letters of recommendation, and you probably wanna get the higher ones because they're gonna score you points. You can use your teacher abilities whenever you want, as long as you have influence on your turn, and they'll give you certain benefits. Teacher recs definitely help, as well as teacher abilities. Additionally, influence cards. Throughout the game, you're gonna have these cards you'll be playing, which are basically your actions that you're gonna be gathering on your turn. They have, they're always a double-edged sword. That's kind of the point of Daggers High, right? Is you're always gonna have this double-edged sword as to, have, oh, I wanna play this, but it's at a high cost. But this one's not so bad, but it's like you're gonna get less actions for it. Essays are gonna be flipping, flipping, flipping. You're gonna be dropping them down, trying to score as many points as you possibly can. So maybe if you're a student that's very good at uh, essays in school, that might be something you'd wanna practice on doing in this game as well. You can also score a boatload of points if you just focus on your grades for your classes, which in general, you'd think that's the most important thing. But for me in this game, I noticed that I could get away with doing a lot of clubs and a lot of essays. That's kind of what I like to do, which gives us a lot of variety as to what you want to do. Do you wanna focus on the teachers and your grades? 
grades, teachers and clubs, essays in your grades, so on and so forth. So you can kind of mix and match how you want. You probably don't want to work focus on just one thing because there's a lot of things that will generate points. Additionally, getting clubs earlier in the game is great because you're going to get certain things like pluses to your different stats and whatnot every year with that yearly effect, plus a bonus. Additionally, there's certain things they'll say. If you have three clubs of this type or two clubs of this type, you're going to get this specific bonus and you can just flip the card over and get another essay to score more and more points moving along that track there. Uh, so it's, it's good. There's a lot of stuff going on. All four of the years with their action cards are different and you're drafting and you're moving along and you're like, oh, I don't want this card, but I don't want him to get it. And so there's a lot of back and forth choices. This game has a little bit of tension and a little bit of take that aspect, but only as far as these cards go for the most part. You're gonna be saying, okay, choose another player. They get minus two happiness and plus two stress. That's a take that card. But you're only gonna get two actions. Is it really worth to play? Maybe you want more actions on your turn. So you'll choose the flu, which says choose another player and you both get plus two stress. So that is that extra action worth you getting two stress? It's kind of up to you to decide. And most of the cards are very fairly balanced so that there's always kind of this teeter-totter as to how you want to play. Uh, some unique little twists as well there, which I'm not going to explain because I want you guys to go ahead and check it out for yourselves. I really, really enjoyed this game. I played it with three and four players. I don't think it'd be as fun one or two players, so I didn't I didn't go into, into that as much, but if you're a solo player, you might enjoy this as well. There's specific solo mode achievements. That, there's a little page here that has little solo mode achievements. Unlocking the bookworm, unlocking the couch potato, in which you're going to be getting 16 A's or getting three or more detentions and so on and so forth, which is a nice little twist. So you have, you have these achievements to try and mark off as you're playing the game, but it's rather large it takes a bit of time to set up, so for the most part, I like playing these games with more players, and that was what I would suggest to you if you were interested in taking a look at Daggers High. This is a couple, like I said, the aggressive aspect of the game can get people a little dissuade from playing the game, and uh, there are some improvements that they're going to be talking, they told me about that is going to be included in the game, but for the most part, it all works out really well. It's really, really enjoyable, and the theme fits very, very well as well. If this sounds like a game that you'd be interested in, as long as you're uh, for a more medium to heavy style game, you're going to dig daggers high. You can go ahead and take a look down below in the description if you want to check it out. It's on Kickstarter and it, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed myself. And I think for people that uh, this is one of those things where you'll see it and say this is the game for me or not so much. All right. Well, thank you for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time in high school. No, it's never going to happen. I'm never going back to high school.